Hello, and welcome to our 16th lesson in Reawaken the Dream, a course for the writer mom and anyone who has to write in time fragments and wants to make their writing consistent across those little pieces of time in which you get to write. We are building a very practical tool, the Character Profile Tool, that will give us the power of living characters. If you're just tuning in, you probably don't want to start with our 11th character trait. This is a whole course, but you can easily find the playlist with all of the videos in the course. So start from one and we'll see you soon back at 16. Well, let's begin with just a quick run through of last week's character trait. Last week, we looked at the character trait of courtesy and we said that the tried emotions, the struggle, the model was the alpha animal maintaining control in his pack by doing little nippings or other things to keep them all in line and to show himself as being the alpha character. And we said that the lost side, the most common way of thinking of it was simply rudeness. But there were a couple of other interesting lost states as well. Obsequiousness, which is overdoing the courtesy, we said it came in two forms. One was hidden contempt. You're not in a position where you can be rude to that person, but you sure would like to. So you just be nicey, nicey, nice. The other one, fawning, where the other person is in a position to give you something that you want, and so you're sort of kissing up to them in the hopes of getting something. But then we said there was a strange and interesting third lost state for courtesy, and that came in with neediness. Huh? What do we mean by neediness? Well, by neediness, the kind of neediness that we're talking about is in the dominance behavior where basically you're attempting to force a behavior out of another person without any kind of a contract that required him. You simply exposed your, your vulnerability, and because you exposed it, you expect to have something given to you based on that. But we said that's not the same thing as coming up to, your, to the person who's the love of your life and saying, honey, I had a bad day, I need a hug. That's not what we're talking about here. And we said the victory state really is when it's courtesy is at the anchor or the base position. And when courtesy is in the anchor or the base position, there's no struggle. And if there's no struggle, there's no overt victory. But what you do get is a pleasant society, which is much, much smoother and more pleasant for everyone to live in. So this week, we're going to do another empathy trait. Are you ready? This one, kindness. Huh, kindness and courtesy seem an awful lot alike. We'll explore that in the analysis. But before I go there, let's see if you can figure out the difference between them just by the scenarios. Kendra had been asked to do the dishes. She was only eight years old. The job had always been given to one of her older siblings, but today she was asked to do the dishes. She was a little bit nervous about it. She collected all the dishes into the kitchen, and after she was done scraping them, she pulled a stool up to the sink, got on the stool, started the hot water, and gave a good squeeze of detergent into the sink. Well, immediately the bubbles started forming and pretty soon they rose up to the level of the sink. Oh my, she shut off the water very quickly so it wouldn't run all over the floor, but there wasn't a whole lot of water underneath there. So she was kind of slapping the bubbles down to make enough space that she could do the dishes. She did everything in the order she was told, glassware first, then silverware, and now she was ready to do the plates, but uh-oh, by now the water level was almost up to the brim from every time she had to rinse 
a dish. So she knew she wouldn't be able to get the plates done with that. So she was reaching down in to get the stopper, to release the stopper, and it wouldn't release. And she was trying and trying to pull it so she could let some of the water out. Well, just then her father walked into the room. He looked around. He saw her sleeves soaked up to the elbows. He saw suds dripping down the front of the cabin and splotches of water on the floor. You idiot, he yelled. Don't you even know how much water to put in the sink? Kindness? Oh, Jerry looked at the scene in front of him and oh, was he tempted. His older brother was working on a poster for school. He'd been working on it for several days. But Jerry was eyeing this glass which had dirty paint water, and there was a brush handle sticking up from the glass. Ooh, it would be so easy to walk by there and just accidentally flick that brush handle, and psh, dirty paint water would go all over his brother's poster and ruin it. <laughs> Boy, that would get even for that bullying that he got from his brother. Boy, I should do that. Uh, but he knew that if he did, his brother would surely beat him up. But it was almost tempted. It might almost be worth it. Kindness? Anna worked at the clothing closet. She helped in the back room, sorting the barrels of donated clothing that came in. Usually there were three or four people at a time working there. And uh, the first day that, that uh, Anna got there to work, Susan came up to her and said, you know, what, how did you learn about this volunteer job? Oh, it was in our church bulletin. Yeah, me too. She said, watch out for those other people. You can always tell who they are. Anna was puzzled. She didn't know what what on earth Susan was trying to say, but she felt a little, a little bit revolted by it. Well, it turns out that some of the volunteers were people that had taken advantage of the clothing that was available for free from this charity, and they wanted to give back. Well, it was true. You could tell them, you could always tell who they were. That was true. But Anna liked listening to them. She liked hearing their stories. And she, yeah, I, they didn't have the social skills to do a, a back and forth conversation. They just didn't have those social skills. But Anna was happy to listen to their stories and never interrupted. Kindness. Kathleen couldn't help noticing the elderly gentleman with three bags of groceries squeezed onto the seat of his walker. He was maneuvering it gingerly towards the trunk of the car. When he got there, he could barely, barely get the trunk of the car open. And then he was trying to wrestle the first of the bags out of the squeezed in seat. And, and the walker was starting to roll away from him. Well, Kathleen rushed over and helped scoot the walker back up and stabilize it so that the gentleman could get his bags. But he gave her a gruff look and continued to struggle to get the bag. So she thought, well, maybe I can hold down the other one so this one will come up and I can help pull it. Woo! He gave her an even gruffer look. Finally, frustrated, she, she looked to the man and said, how best can I help you? And the guy looked at her and said, you can leave me alone. Oh. You got it. Gave him a salute and walked away. She couldn't help noticing that he was grinning from ear to ear and chuckling as he continued to struggle with his bags. Kindness? How could it be that a woman would get to 76 years of age and not realize that if you're really going to be kind, you ask permission first? And by the way, the name was not changed.
so as to protect the person who was not innocent. Kindness. All right. Kindness. Were you able to see how kindness and courtesy were actually quite different? If you didn't notice it before, you'll certainly see the difference in the triad of emotions. We just reviewed the triad of emotions for courtesy with the, the alpha animal keeping all the others in line with little nips. Well, with kindness, you have a much more pointed situation. You have a challenger animal deciding that it wants to be the alpha animal and the alpha animal's response. Grrr. You see, it's much more pointed and it's very directed. The alpha animal could look at all of the other animals and just reign over them. But if somebody challenged him, he was right at the challenger. So that gives us very clear look at our lost state of kindness. It would, it's unkindness or even all the way to cruelty. As you'll see, the lost state of kindness is very pointed and very specific. Let's take a little deeper look. When we have kindness as a pinnacle trait, sorry, my circle isn't very good, then we have an arch villain. An arch villain might even gloat in cruelty. If you have kindness as a wing trait, you've got an ordinary villain. Still a, still a good character in your story to show how you take him down. But if you have kindness showing up as a rudder trait, then you're probably dealing with a junior villain. You're probably dealing with somebody who's battling some forces in their lives that is really causing him to bring something rather basic into question. If it's a youth, you worry for him. If it's an adult with kindness in the rudder position, you don't like him. You know right away you don't like him. So what about the victory state of kindness? The victory state of kindness is equally specific and it's equally directed. The victory state of kindness sees the needs of another person and responds out of empathy, out of caring for that person. And there's always a cost associated with kindness. You can go through life being courteous to others and affable towards others at basically little or no cost. But when you go all the way to kindness, there's always a certain cost involved even if it's just bending over to pick something up off that someone has dropped. So what modifiers do we have for kindness? There's just one modifier, the modifier that's true of every character trait, and that's scale. But there's an interesting twist. Isn't that true? These character traits always have something interesting going on. In this case, the loss scale is different from the victory scale. When you're dealing with the loss side of kindness, which is cruel, unkindness and all the way to cruelty, the loss is the depth of the injury. If you hurt somebody's feelings, that's very unkind. If you kick them and injure them, that's a higher scale. So what's the scale of victory? And the victory, where our character is going out of their way to be kind to another person, the scale has to do with the cost to the person who is giving. So we still have scale, but it's not boring. Scale, uh, kindness, of course, belongs to the empathy group. <laughs> the biggest group of all, of course, we're social beings, and we're attuned to clues from other beings in society. So of course we have the most character traits that come in the empathy group. All of the empathy group 
character traits reveal the heart to one degree or another. And for, but for empathy group traits, it's one of the easiest groups of traits to follow the guideline, show, don't tell. And the easiest of all to show, don't tell is kindness. And I can give you a super simple micro scenario to show you how true that is. Billy spotted the bus, school bus, about to approach. Oh, he dropped his bus pass. Billy spotted it. A. He picked it up, dusted it off on his own pant leg, and gave it back. Kindness. Scenario B. He looked at it, stomped it in the ground, and just kind of ground it into the ground with his foot. Ooh. Lost state of kindness. You don't have to say anything. You know just because you saw it. Very, very, very easy character trait to show. So we're on to our character profile tool. And what fun we have today for our topic. We are going to discover the role of hooks. Hooks are just amazing, amazing properties of any character trait that's in the rudder position. What is a hook? Well, Let's think a little bit about what it means to have a character trait in the rudder position. That means there's a certain tension. There's a potential for a decision to be made. If it comes into play in a scene, we don't necessarily know what the outcome is going to be. There's something going on. And the fact that there's an attention and a choice means that there are hooks just bakes into that situation where the white hat hook could guide our character into making a positive decision and a black hat hook could pull our character into making a negative decision. So let's, let's run through a few of these just, just so that it becomes more concrete because when you're just throwing words around it doesn't always come across. So let's say your character has orderliness in the rudder position. Well, the character is aware that he's not perfect with orderliness and he's always having to make a choice of do I put this away now or do I let it sit there? Do I make, plan ahead with for my, I've got to fill out my planning book and my calendar or do I wait till later? Don't worry, there's a perfect planner that just came out in time for the new year, it will solve all of your orderliness problems. Buy me, buy me, and orderliness will never be a problem for you again. That's a sales hook. Salesmen and villains know all about hooks. Let's take another example. Say your character has self-control in the rudder position. With self-control in the rudder position, both the marketer and the villain will be fighting for your character's attention. The villain will want to sell him a scam and so that he could be enticed into the scam. The marketer will use his uh, tools too to get the your character to make an impulse buy because he doesn't have good impulse control. They'll both be spotting that character very quickly. And that's the interesting thing about hooks. A character might go through life blithely, totally unaware that they even have these hooks. But every character trait in the rudder position automatically has hooks baked in. Shall we continue? What about loyalty? What about loyalty? Remember our character Jerry who wanted to spill the paint water onto his brother's poster but he didn't because he knew his brother would beat him all up and make him feel really crappy? Well, 
Would he be vulnerable if a gang said, hey, we'll beat your brother up for you. All you got to do is leave the back door to your house unlocked and tell us where your parents keep the valuables. If, if Jerry has loyalty in the rudder position, will he take that? Let's hope he won't. So, what about affability? What? Hooks regarding affability? How could there be any hooks attached to affability? Oh, yeah? How many expensive watches have been sold by showing a glamorous person being snooty towards other people with the message, you will be superior to them? Remember with affability? We are displaying our judgment of our place compared to the others. When we're affable, we're saying we're all, we're all in this together. And when you're not so affable, you're saying, I'm above you. You don't matter. And that, again, is a hook to say, ah, you can be erased in your status and we'll show that you have elevated status because you're going to be snooty and rude to the people around you. Pretty interesting, huh? They all have hooks. So this means that we have a task that we have to perform, a new job. Because the interesting thing about hooks, even though we can say with great clarity that every rudder trait installed has hooks attached to it, I cannot go through all of these wonderful character traits that we're building up you are keeping up your reference sheets, aren't you? It's not possible for me to run down these traits and say, and the hook for orderliness is this, and the hook for self-control is this. No, they're situational. But there's a place where we deal with situation. And remember that how important it has been, the concept of placing. A character trait. Remember we said it's a two-step process. First you put the trait on the memory prompt list and you install that trait with a, a scene that has some emotional poignancy that shows you where that trait fits with the character. So let's take our guy Nick. Remember Nick we had he's the affable guy who got off the bus at the wrong stop and then we had Stuart come along and grab his backpack. Well, Stuart dumped his bike and Nick came along and helped him. And things turned out pretty good in the end. But Nick learned from experience. What does that mean? He learned from the, having created a problem that he needed to be aware of having circumspection from now on in the rudder position a new character trait for, for Nick. And when we install that, the emotional tie is right there because having had his backpack grabbed by Stuart. And Nick, the hook for this is a hook that Stuart himself has imposed. He said for himself, every time I put my backpack over my shoulder, I am going to stop and look around and practice circumspection. He installed his own hook, which is an amazing thing that we can do with traits that are in the rudder position. There's traits on either side, the white hat or the black hat, and there's even ones that we can install for ourselves. But the task that is incumbent on you now as a writer from now on the moment that you place a character trait in the rudder position and you make the entry in your memory prompt list, bring to mind as well, what is the hook? And what is the hook? Because there's something very interesting about these hooks. Villains and marketers use them to attempt to rob they're the person they're working with 
from the decision-making power that that person should logically have, trying to control and take over their decision-making process. And that's their role in the world, but our role as writers is to use those hooks to demonstrate the motivation, the reason why the character responded to the white hat hook and, and improved, or responded to the black hat hook and chose the wrong decision. So that is a very, very important process of our writing. Every, every writer trait has hooks. We need, they're situational. We need to know for our characters what those hooks are. Many times, it's those hooks will be the reason why we'll place the trait in the rudder position because we'll want to be able to use those hooks to control our character's decision going forward in the story. So that's our character profile tool for this week. Next week, we have a really interesting study. We're talking a lot about all these emotions, triad of emotion. Everything we're dealing with with the character traits is emotional. And we're getting to the point every week we practice, remember, kindness and we bring the emotions to mind and we're training our less verbal side of our brain to associate the word with the emotion. Well, when we go to write and we have all of these emotions in us, how do we know that the emotion actually got written onto the page? And that's what we're going to talk about for the character profile tool for next time. So in the meantime, do your homework, make your scenarios for kindness. Don't forget, from now on, every writer trait know its hooks. And we'll see you again next week for our next character trait. Bye-bye.